welcome everyone so today we'll be discussing lecture 8 so we'll be discussing product of symmetry operations product of symmetry operations so we can also call the product as a combination of symmetry operations because this is really not a product but a combination because we are applying one uh, symmetry operation after the other so let's say if we are applying one symmetry operation first followed by second symmetry operation where x is one symmetry operation and uh, y is the other one so let's say if this is applied first and this is applied second and the result of overall transformation of applying first and second symmetry operation can be directly achieved by a third symmetry operation let's say call it as z then uh, we call it as that z is a combination of so z is a combination of y and x okay and the order of symmetry operation the order of symmetry operations does matter here because not all symmetry operations commute with each other we have seen that earlier what is a commutation of symmetry operations so what i mean is y x is not necessarily equal to it may or may not be equal to x y right where this is your first and this is your second operand and in this case x is your first and y is your second operand so let's see uh, let's say if we have x1 y1 z1 is the coordinate of a given point in a coordinate system and by operating with x we take it to x2 y2 z2 and again by operating with y we take it to x3 y3 z3 then if you find a symmetry operation which can directly take you from x1 y1 z1 to x3 y3 z3 by using z then z is called as combination of y and x in this particular order right okay so for example let's say if we have uh, we can say that uh, if we have this is one such example uh, two c2 axes perpendicular to each other there exist a third c2 perpendicular to both so we can say that uh, let's say if c2x and c2y exist because now they are both perpendicular to each other c2z must exist okay so let's say if we have let's operate this c2x on x y z so operating c2 x operating on x y z so in this case let's see what happens if we have right handed coordinate system we have x y z and now if my c2 is running along x axis this is my c2 okay anti-clockwise direction so what happens so y will go to minus y z will move to minus z x will remain as uh, same 
because x is not moving x is lying along the x axis right so what happens my coordinates will change like x will remain as such y will go to minus y i am representing minus y as y bar z will uh, go to minus z right now similarly if i am applying c to y what happens now so x goes to minus x now minus y remains as minus y and minus z goes to plus z so i hope this is very very clear so what i have done here is now i have used c to y axis so y remains where it was and x and z change their sign okay so now you can easily see that if we have to go from here to here x is changing its sign y is changing its sign whereas z is remaining as such which can be obtained by c to z operation right so thus we have shown that if there are two perpendicular c2 axis there must exist a c2 axis which is perpendicular to both so now c2 z is perpendicular to both x as well as y right so this is uh, called as product or combination of symmetry operations so that means we can say that existence of two symmetry elements may automatically require third one to exist so for example here we have seen that c2x and c2y were existing and because their presence is there so c2z must exist so uh, that means it's the existence of c2x and c2y is directing the existence of c2z right in other words we can say the combination of two symmetry elements we can say operations actually is itself an operation right so let us take an example uh, to see and the order does matter we will see uh, in certain cases it may commute in certain cases it may not commute so let's take an example uh, so b f b f3 let's say 1 2 3 okay now let's do an operation we know that there is a c3 axis here right c3 axis is lying passing through b and lying perpendicular to the plane of this board so if we do a c3 operation anti clockwise what happens it will change the b remains at its own position and then one moves here two moves there 120 degree rotation three moves here right now let's say if we do c3 square operation okay so c3 done twice onto this so what will happen now my three goes two times three will move one two because c3 is done twice so in one c3 it will go from here to here but we are doing c3 twice so it should move like this so it will be a 240 degree 240 right yeah 240 degree rotation okay so c3 goes here f2 comes here f1 goes here okay so let's see we have three here two here one here so this should be very clear now if you see if you have to go from here to here what will be that operation 
now look at the atom position so f does not change f1 f2 does not change f3 does not change that means this operation is nothing but a identity operation so we can say that c3 and c3 square so remember the order we have uh, used here is c3 is operated first and c3 square is operated second although in this case it does not matter we'll see why is equal to e right so whenever uh, two symmetry operations combine to give so we can say that when two symmetry operations combine to give E, we say that one operation is inverse of the other. We'll see what it means. So we can say that C3 is equal to C3 square inverse or C3 square is equal to C3 inverse. So what do I mean by inverse? So inverse is doing the same thing in the opposite direction. For example, if I'm doing C3 anti-clockwise and C3 square clockwise, so it would mean the same thing. So it's like, uh, doing the same thing but in opposite direction so if i'm doing c3 square uh, then it will be equal to c3 inverse right so okay let's uh, see that again so bf 1 2 3 so if i'm doing c3 then what do I get? F2, F3, F1. And now if I'm doing C3 inverse, then that will be doing the same operation, but in the other side, right? So what do I get? So I get the same thing back. So 3 goes back two goes back and one goes back so now you see that we have done c3 c3 inverse and i'm getting the same as we got after doing identity or c3 c3 square so that means now c3 square becomes equal to c3 inverse right so these two operation because now the first set of operations are same c3 c3 and the second set of operation here was c3 square whereas here it is c3 inverse but the resultant is same so we can safely say that c3 inverse is equal to c3 square and you can also do the vice versa thing so basically uh, it proves that when two symmetry operations combine to give you e we say that one operation is inverse of the other so that should be easy but uh, okay so now let's also see a case where the symmetry operations do not commute so in this particular case actually uh, let's let me go back the order does not matter so we can say that c3 and c3 square if you do it then also it will be equal to e okay so order does not matter order independent because they are combining to give e the order would not matter here but if they don't combine to give e the order will matter and it may or may not commute okay so let's look at the same molecule again and take a combination of two different symmetry operations so let's again do c3 first so we have three one two right one two three yeah now let's do sigma v1 so sigma v1 will be this plane okay so the plane which is passing through 
BF1 in the original molecule, not in the transformed molecule. So the location of this sigma V1 will be with respect to when we started with the molecule, not where we ended after doing the C3 operation. So that has to be very, very clear that whenever we are taking the initial configuration of molecule, we are fixing all the symmetry elements and accordingly we have to take the symmetry operations. We can't be moving symmetry. So for example, if we say that this is my location of sigma V1, that would be incorrect. So this is not sigma V1. Okay. My sigma V1 will be this one. Okay. So then in this case, my sigma V1 will be this. This should be clear. So if I do this operation, then what do I get? So that means F3 does not move and the two F's will be reflected, the other two F's, F1 and F2, okay. So now if I have to go from here to here directly, what will be my operation? So in this case, if you see that F1 moves clockwise to this, then F3 basically f2 does not change and f1 and f3 are reflected right that means if i reflect it by sigma v2 uh, this will be the operation which will take it from first to let's say if we call it first second third so we can safely say that sigma v2 is equal to sigma v1 c3 so the order is uh, we operated C3 first and sigma V1 second. Okay. Now let's see what happens if we do it reverse. So let's take the same starting point. We have three, F1, F2. I'm doing sigma V1 first. So what do I get? So again, my sigma V1 position is this is my sigma v1 so that means the f1 does not move f2 and f3 will get reflected now if i do c3 operation what do i get so if i do c3 operation one goes here anti-clockwise three and two now what is this operation so in this case my f3 is not moving f1 and f2 are getting reflected so i'm comparing 4 5 and 6 okay so in this case if you see f3 f3 is same whereas f1 and f2 are getting reflected so that would be sigma v3 right so in this case if we change the order what do i get c3 sigma v1 is equal to sigma v3 so you see how the uh, this particular product if i change the order it results into two different symmetry operations so we can safely say that c3 and sigma v1 commutator is not equal to zero right so they do not commute is that clear okay so c3 or we can say c3 does not commute with sigma v1 right another important property symmetry operations uh, follow uh, is symmetry operations obey associative law so what is associative law associative law means that if we have two operations x y and a third operation z then uh, x y product of two operations into a third operation is equal to x y z so what do I mean in this case? So I mean that if I am doing this operation first, first, 
and then the combination of this as second this will be equal to if i do combination of this as first and this as second okay this should be equal always irrespective of what molecule is what the symmetry operation is and so on so right so this should be very clear so symmetry operations obey associative law and we can test it out using any example uh, like bf3 so take it as a home assignment to verify associative law in bf3 and h2o so let's take two different examples so that the operations how to do this operations will be very very clear okay and come back to me if there is any issue with this okay so let's now take so we are now ready to actually go to define what is a point group so let's take the example of symmetry point group so what is a symmetry point group so a com by definition a complete set we will see what is a complete set a complete set of non redundant symmetry operations so i am saying symmetry operations and not symmetry elements thus identifying the list of symmetry operations is crucial okay so we have learned how to first list down the symmetry elements and then uh, find out what all non redundant symmetry operations exist so a complete set of non redundant symmetry operations and i will specifically write here and not elements of a uh, given molecule defines a symmetry point group we'll see why it is called as point group and all okay so uh, for example if we take example of uh, water molecule the symmetry elements and thus the operations so we'll list out both we have seen this earlier so elements are e c2 sigma v1 and sigma v2 right and the corresponding operations are e c2 c2 square will be equal to e so we'll not consider that sigma v1 will generate 1 sigma v2 will generate 1 right so this forms uh, a point group called as c2v okay so we define it as c2v this is the notation we will learn later called as shown fly symbols of point group but uh, let's see so these set of symmetry operations not the elements these set of symmetry operations will give you point group as c2v and now let's look at uh, another molecule cyclohexane in boat form if you have uh, done this exercise so here also the elements are e c2 sigma v1 sigma v2 so this i gave it as home exercise to identify the symmetry elements and operations so this is very similar as water so although the water and cyclohexane both form they look very different but their symmetry operations which are existing in this are same and hence both of them belong to c2v point group 
so that means any physical property which is uh, dependent on the symmetry operations because of this classification they will be sharing those physical properties right so it is interesting that how uh, the two differently looking molecules are classified into same category because they have same set of symmetry operations and thus their physical properties will be very similar whatever physical property depends on this set of symmetry operations right okay so now let's see uh, how to determine this point group and what are different types we'll see that how to determine symmetry point group of a molecule okay so let's look at this so first thing here is to inspect all the symmetry elements in the molecule right second is list down the operations generated by the elements listed in the above step elements in step one so up to this we have seen how to do this right but this is uh, not so easy because uh, in certain cases where the molecule is big and uh, highly symmetric the number of operations are huge and then sometimes we may miss out uh, one element or the other and uh, unless we really practice it hard so you will find uh, several books have flow charts made can be followed to find uh, find the point group so we'll see how okay so but before we go there let us see what is the complete set right what is the complete what do i mean by uh, complete set of symmetry operations so a complete set is a one in which every possible combination combination of two operations in the set is also an operation in the set so this sound this may sound confusing but let's see so what i'm saying is that uh, if we have let's say if we define a group where the set of symmetry operations are a b c d and so on then uh, if we combine two symmetry operations in any possible way and we get let's say c or if we are doing p a we are getting d then c and d must form the element of this group okay so that will define the complete set similarly if we do a c we should have another product which should form a part of this set so this way this is called as a complete set so uh, again so let's take an example so again let's take the same uh, bf3 case we have been discussing so in this case the symmetry operations let us list it down e c3 c3 square then we have c2 
c2 prime c2 double prime so i'm not uh, writing it as 3c2 just uh, so that that we are listing all the symmetry operations independently but they will be essentially equivalent so we can actually say 3c2 but let's see explicitly listing all the symmetry operations so we have sigma v1 sigma v2 or we can call it as sigma v sigma v prime sigma v double prime sigma v3 and we also have sigma h so now if you see c3 and sigma h is there then s3 would also exist so s3 s3 square right so now if we say that uh, if we try to take a product so this is a complete set of symmetry operations for this particular molecule now if we take product of any two symmetry operations or combination of any two symmetry operations it should give rise to a symmetry operation which is already present in this set okay if it is not then we must include that operation also into this set okay otherwise it will never be complete so what i mean is that if i am combining let's say uh, c3 and then i am doing a sigma v1 we have seen this earlier if we do this in this order what we get is sigma v3 right so now we are combining c3 and sigma v1 and what we are getting is sigma v3 which is already present in this group so similarly you should be able to test out so take it as a home assignment home assignment number two for today to verify that the above set of symmetry operations is a complete set okay so by complete set i mean that any combination of two symmetry operations should give rise to third symmetry operation which must be present within this set so you should be able to verify this and the combination is not necessarily that two symmetry operations have to combine it may also be the case that c3 and c3 are combining for example if we combine c3 and c3 we will get c3 square if we combine c3 and c3 square we will get e so i have already done at least three combinations for you so you should be able to verify how to do this okay so uh, that's it for today and uh, next class we will look at uh, how exactly we find out what are the properties which are required to form a symmetry point group and how do we find out symmetry point groups okay all right that's it for today